absolutely hate those freaking tubes. That is water coming out of the pipe. All right? Blows. All right, on today's video, big block Chevrolet Pro Charge gasoline blow through carburetor tuning, and this thing's for sale, used. Now, let's go over and look at what this customer traded this engine in on, and then we'll talk more about this. All right, so what Lance upgraded to is one of our all aluminum 540 cubic inch big block Chevy. So this is just the upgrade version going to methanol, EFI methanol, aluminum block 540 basically the same setup uh, gonna still use possibly the same charger might end up doing a different charger uh if we sell the charger with that engine not quite sure but so this one's all done so what we needed to do and what lance wanted me to do is hey i'm gonna send you the engine right directly out of the car can you put it on the dyno and run it exactly the way i send it to you so that's what we're gonna, we're gonna do I'll go over there, we'll go back in, I'll tell you more about that engine since I have it up for sale. All right, so we're back in here. Now this was, if you notice, this is something that we did a long time ago because it still has some of our uh, old logo valve covers. So this is actually would have been in 2000, oh shucks, this probably would have been 2004, five or six. So. 20 years ago holy crap so he has had this engine in the car for all that time now lance is out of hilo uh i think it's hilo sorry if it's not hawaii pretty sure it's hilo hawaii and uh uh definitely hawaii and uh in a really cool uh gto bright yellow it's really cool Really kind of cool car but anyway so he's been running this thing for a long time and, and it's just been good as gold to him but wants to go faster wants to upgrade wants to get 20 year newer technology so pretty interesting back in the day this is what i did all the time was blow through carburetor stuff i mean that was just it 20 years ago uh, at least for me so this is 540 uh dart pro one 355 heads iron block, good parts, everything is in it is just really nice, good solid, obviously, uh, package. And so we're gonna sell this uh, as a long block, you know, intake, the oil pan, uh, can possibly even sell it all turnkey and then I would just have to get him a different blower. Currently we're talking about just taking this whole blower assembly off and put it in. Now obviously you can also see this is not on methanol, this is gasoline, so this is C16 or Q16 intercooled gasoline so really kind of interesting deal see that that's the work of a master master carb technician he was standing in the other room and he immediately knew what was wrong with it All right, that's a popping and a banging, misfiring. We have not taken the spark plugs out of this thing or anything. Right? No, so he literally just put it on exactly the way he sent it to us. So we'll check this thing out here real quick because it obviously is not revving up and figure out exactly what's all going on there. All right, so you already saw yesterday I made the first pull on this thing and it is so far off, it's just sitting there, pop, 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 pop. I mean, it wouldn't even rev up. So. We pulled the spark plugs out of it. 
And I'm here to tell you right now that is astronomically fat. And that's the only one that was even close was this one. That's super fat. So it's got a ton of fuel in it. So I'm just getting ready to, uh, uh, I changed plugs, Got just getting ready to do uh, some jet change and see what's going on with it. Pretty surprised it's taking a bunch of jet out of it, given uh, Hawaii, it's obviously at sea level. Air is pretty consistent over there, but I don't know how good the air is over there, to tell you the truth. So, um, surprised that I'm taking a uh, jet out of it, but it looks like it's just astronomically rich. That's probably why it's doing a little bit of misfiring. doesn't want to rev up. Uh, probably will also change maybe cap rotor since I already got new plugs in it. Try to see, I don't want to spend a ton of time making it run perfect because that, uh, we're just going to tear this apart, freshen it up, and then sell it. And he's getting that new engine over there. So anyways, I think I'll just uh, do a quick uh, jet change in it, see if we can figure out exactly what's going on. Probably change cap and rotor to see if he sent a new cap and rotor with it. So maybe he already knew there was some little misfire going on. But anyways. Uh, let's get after it. I've not done my due diligence and gotten some of my used trade-in engines uh, on the website. This might be interested to you guys. Let's see. This is one of Clark's engines, LS engines out of the Mustang. Now, this made 2,800, 27. This made 2,700 horsepower. You can go back and look at one of the videos on it. It's all fresh. We just went through it. It's all fresh, ready to roll. Clark doesn't have the Mustang anymore, so. We have here, Clark has got getting rid of everything. Now we will part it out or we'll sell it all complete. This is everything from switch panel, set up. Is this a, whose is this? Speed wire, Speed wire system, fuel pump, uh, fuel pump drivers, eight, or uh, poly dominator, coil on plug, EGTs, wiring harness, filters, bullseye turbo, 83 millimeter NLX turbos. Really good turbo. Uh, the dry sump system, aviated tank, fuel. I mean, this is absolutely 100% of everything. And or we can sell just the engine uh, over here. So uh, I'm going to get all this stuff up on the website here, hopefully pretty quick. I, got I also have this brand new engine that we did for a customer who, uh, actually this is for a military guy who is now basically uh, deployed, basically. And so this is LS. Uh, LSX block. This was built to be a turbo 2000 horsepower deal. PRC heads. Really nice piece. Jessel Rockers, the whole deal. I'll have a full listing on this engine that is for sale. Alright, so you saw I just changed the cap and rotor on there and I did notice that the base of the rotor was loose. So it was flopping around in there. Don't know if that was what's causing it, but it was flopping around in there. So now we come in and we're gonna, I'm still gonna look at the jetting on this thing and see where it's at. Cause it's definitely rich, regardless if it's misfiring or doing anything else. So these are a dual needle and seat bowl. This is the way if you want to make over 1,200-ish horsepower, uh, you're going to need to go to a dual needle and seat bowl, really. It's just a much safer setup. Um, you can only flow X amount of fuel through a single needle and seat. It just is what it is. You have a, like 150, uh, 100, yeah, around 150 thousandths needle and seat, and then you got two jets that are like 99s, like Sam would say. You wouldn't be able to flow enough fuel ultimately. So this is our dual needle and seat bowl. Let me take this line off. I should have just taken that off in the first place. My bad. That's a hassle. Alrighty. So here, this is, this is old, old I have uh, videos on this stuff, and I was actually showing Kyle this just the other day because he doesn't have a freaking clue. He's young. So these are the dual needle and seats. Okay, so this is the float. I hold it upside down because that's how you actually set the float height 
uh, to start with. When they're down like this, now watch, blow into it, blows. This way, when you're upside down, no blowy. So imagine when the fuel comes into the carburetor, bink, the floats come up and then shut the needle and seat off. Shut the fuel off. And when the floats go down, it starts allowing more and more fuel in. And if they're all the way down like that, then you're just screwed because you don't have enough fuel pump or something. Or it's using more fuel than what you can supply. So anyways, I know that the float level is right. These are stacked up vent tubes. This is, oh, this has got a lot of fuel in it somewhere. So this is a boost reference power valve that adds fuel on boost. All right, so carburetor, and what you're actually doing is, this is getting way more into weed, weeds than I thought I was gonna get, but if you guys are interested in this, you might as well, you might as well see it. So the carburetor is actually getting pressurized. This carburetor, this bowl, is actually pressurized from the boost. The boost comes in here to the copper carburetor and comes through the vent tube right there, which is that hole right there, which goes through these little stacked up tubes and into the bowl, pressurizing the bowl. So in a sense, it's like a boost referenced regulator. In fact, it basically is a boost reference regulator. Now, this uh, power valve would then have boost on this side of it and as it reaches a certain amount of boost it's determined by your spring pressure it pushes that plunger back allows fuel to go through the power valve channel which is right here then allows fuel to go through those, all right? And that adds fuel into your main well, adds fuel to your main jet. So those holes right there, six holes, add fuel to your main jet when this thing gets blown open by boost, all right? And it has got a lot of freaking fuel on it right now because this jet is, can't read that, what's it say? 87. 87. <laughs> okay. Lighting was bad. Yeah, lighting is bad. All right, so I had to have Nate look at it. Them old mice just don't work like they used to. Now, a lot of carburetors, this is a CSU carburetor. A lot of carburetors would have adjustable jetting right there that you could change jetting there. Kevin does this mainly with the power valve itself. So you can turn the power valve in, have it come in a little later and boost. All of these things work amazingly well for how, for the amount of technology that's here. Gets a little bit of pressure, blows a spring open, allows more fuel in, versus controlled uh, pulse width on an injector. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on there. So on this one, uh, I'm just gonna change some main jet here. It's got an 87 in it right now. I think I'll just probably go down to like an 82, and then we're gonna see what's in the back and do the exact same thing. As you can see here, 94, 5, 6, 7, 8, 99. It's only one. You have to know that reference to understand what I'm talking about. For all you EFI guys, Going backwards, I've given it like 5% less fuel across the whole map. Now, now this here is your accelerator pump arm. Uh, otherwise known as AE fuel TPS over, uh, let's see TPS over position. Well, it's TPS added fuel in EFI form. And then the size of this would be this 
basically is let's see so that would be like in a holly system that would be tps or rate of change <laughs> fuel ae fuel uh, all sorts of cool stuff there's just no pretty numbers and colors to stimulate the brain no there's not this is like you need to use your imagination, imagination. <laughs> put the smudge by yeah. the clip in there <laughs> <laughs> Letting the fuel out of the rails. I guess it jumped ahead of the gun. This is a metering block. Fuel bowl. Floats, a little high. Fuel extensions to get the a jet into the fuel. Because in the back of the carburetor, why would that be there, Nate? Why do you think that's there? This is the back of the carburetor, okay? Mm -hmm. Back of the car. Why do you think you might have to have jet extensions putting the jet all the way back here? The fuel's getting pushed back. That's guard right, guard takes off and all the fuel goes, sloshes back, so you mm -hmm. gotta have something. Extensions to do that. So you have jet extensions and you have a power valve in the back with a power valve extension right there. So these jets, these look big. I'm a little surprised at that. They've been messing with this. 97. Okay. So it's got a eight had a 97-87 jet in it. I'm gonna go to uh uh 92-81. I didn't have 82s. Somebody took my my actual jet tool. It's a nice little screwdriver that captures it. You know it wasn't caught up. <laughs> he's, no, he's probably using it for something else that he's not supposed to be. That's what I figure. All right, let's go get that work. One thing about uh, blow, anything blow through carburetor. So any of you guys that have blow through carburetors would know this. If you don't know this, you should know this. Uh, when you're cycling fuel, I always just kind of pulse it a few times like this. Get enough fuel to get in and start it. Never start your car with the fuel pump on. Don't turn the fuel pump on and then start the car. Now an EFI car, you have to turn the fuel pump on to start it. On a carbureted car, don't do that. Start, start the engine first. And then if you turn on the fuel pump and the car dies, stop. What's going on is it's flooding. It's overfueling. The needle and seat's stuck and it pours fuel into the engine. So if you just come in there and just go, I'm not going to turn it on because I don't want to do it. <laughs> and then you turn around, talk to your camera guy and the fuel pump's sitting there running and it happens to be stuck and overflowing. It just pumps about five gallons of fuel into your engine. Okay. So always start it with fuel pump off. So that thing still runs like crap. Um, still has that random misfiring going on there. So I got a new plug, new, uh, new cap, new rotors, new spark plugs. Don't have spark plug wires on it. Jetted it down to where I think it's probably definitely okay at. Um, I just wanted to get a little bit of a, uh, data log on this. You see it just made 1800 horsepower at 7,000. We'll see what kind of boost it made because that's really what I'm interested in. Let's get rid of that very first one that you saw there where the spark plugs were totally fouled out. Um, and it doesn't even show really bad right through here. In fact, the graph doesn't look astronomically bad. Let me get this synchronized. There you go. Here's the horsepower. Here's the torque. Still climbing. Boost is... Let's get rid of here. 
Because we don't have that. I should check oil pressure. And don't care about water temp. And there is boost. Boost. There we go. Alright. So that was at yeah, 27 pounds of boost. So she's pretty far off. Uh, 27 pounds of boost, something like this, should be making a uh, uh, pretty pretty good into uh, 2,000 horsepower. So it's a couple hundred horsepower off, but you can hear it just by listening to it. It did start getting better as it was increasing, uh, as it was increasing boost in RPM. It definitely was starting to sound better. Oil pressure, you know, 100 pounds of oil pressure, that's cool. Uh, this laying over is actually just me quitting pulling the throttle back on it. Um, let's go in there and do a plug read. Um, I'm not sure. We'll do we'll do one more uh, jet change if we. It might still be rich. I think here we'll. It's still tipping in good. It's still revving up fine. So um, this is a very short explanation. Uh, if it revs in on a blow through carburetor, if it goes from idle through to wide open throttle without hiccuping or sneezing lean then your main jet is okay uh so we're still not too lean there so i think i'll just lean this up some more uh take a look at the spark plug and see what it looks like all right so let's take a let's do a spark plug read here now the other thing you always get involved with with blow through carburetors is uh there's it is impossible to get perfect fuel distribution. There's no individual cylinder trim. There's This is a regular old MSD style system. There's no individual timing. There's none of that kind of crap. So uh, now this spark plug is, we'd have to look right down in the bottom of it, bottom of the ring. It's still rich. The timing looks reasonable. Let me pull out another spark plug somewhere else over here, probably on this, for some reason, uh, these carburetors like to pick on six. Oh, now also, these things, a blow-through carburetor is typically pretty sensitive to position of this hat, of the carburetor hat, the direction that the air comes into. So, that's an FYI. Now, this thing is actually obviously going to be exceeding my recommended range here. I am not a big fan <coughs> any longer of, of uh, carburetors at this horsepower level. They will um, work pretty darn good. Okay, but there is no individual cylinder trim. There is no you know, oh, this this cylinder is a little bit different than the other cylinder, which it's going to be. It's just a freaking carburetor. It was designed like 100 years ago. There's there's just limitations to what we have here. Um, so I always like, I mean, in anything in that 1,500 and above level, 1,000 horsepower is great on a carburetor. 1,500 is usually pretty good. And see, that is that one's definitely just a tick leaner, but still on the safe side. So I'm not opposed to that. I think I'm still gonna take a little bit of fuel out of this. Um, we'll just go down a couple and then we'll leave her there. Um, but all the little pluses of, of good EFI. Does it take time to figure it out? Yes. You gotta learn how to run a laptop? Yes. Uh, is it overly complicated that a 54 year old guy can't figure it out? No. And I didn't have a young guy showing me. I just learned it. I just figured it all out. I showed Kyle. I trained Kyle. Not the other way around. Hot. And the freaking header is hot. How long did it take for you to learn EFI? Oh, I still learn okay. stuff all the time. But, but, but like you're it took, took really get to really get a, 
a reasonable hand lock to where I wasn't afraid of it. Mm -hmm. and I don't know, probably like three or four inches worth. So I mean, basically, you know, like if a half a half a year or something like that. I don't know, three months. It's it's not hard. For a lot of Took him like two years. Oh, and I see that one is just that is just plain out freaking fat. So <clears throat> herein lies problem. So you just saw me pull the cart, the jet on number six, which it is normally a cylinder that they kick on. Uh, and this is a number eight, which is just plain out. That's just plain out fat. The porcelain is just totally covered. These are brand new spark plugs. So I mean, that's just fat. Um, but outside of taking fuel out of the entire engine, there's nothing really I can do. Yes, you can try taking a little jet out of that corner. But the problem is, is this corner, this jet basically feeds these two runners. If I take fuel out of this to try leaning this one up, it also feeds this one. We just proved that that one's lean. You see the problems with <laughs> with doing these. Um, so, uh, I mean, it's I mean it would probably tolerate a little, definitely would tolerate a little bit more timing too. But um, God darn it, freaking burn my arm right there. I think we will just we're still gonna just take a little bit of jet out of the entire thing. I know that one number one looked safe, rich number. Uh, six there. That was like, that was like pretty much where you want it to be. That is that is pretty good, which means everything else is going to be rich. So I think we'll get that. Um, it'll tolerate it. It's going to tolerate it to to put um, take a little bit of fuel out of it. So I'm going to do another jet change here. We'll just take a couple jet sizes out of it, and I think we're just going to let her let her be right there. As far as going after that little that little random miss, could be my 7AL box. I haven't been into that box for a really long time. Could have a random bad spark plug wire. Since I'm not going to throw, since I'm going to throw these spark plug wires away ultimately when we when we sell this engine, and it probably is not even going to be a carbureted piece. That's why I'm trying. I don't want to waste. I'm, I'm doing this as a, a courtesy for Lance. I'm not charging for it, so uh, I'm just doing it as a courtesy. So I don't want to spend all freaking day on this thing to do that when I know that it's not going to do any good. But I think I'll just lean this up one more time, rev it up, and see if we can get it to be a little closer to the 2,000 horsepower. Absolutely hate those freaking tubes. When they put them on temporarily, they do something exactly like that. You notice, super tough window, but it didn't hit the window. And it's all steel down there now after our mass blower explosion, but that kind of crap happens. Uh, and you can see there, 2008 horsepower. So that's right, right dead on the money, pretty much the way I figured it would be. Um, disregard the thing blowing off there that's just whatever um when we're like i said we're just trying to do some quick testing on this thing not trying to make permanent tubing not trying to do all that other stuff we're not making if you saw the amount of tubing i have upstairs and all the stuff that i have to make these engines run and go i just can't make 
$500 or spend a thousand dollars of time and material to make every single engine run on a dyno nobody's paying for that so anyways that's why that thing pops off it's probably pretty cool on the on the picture mm -hmm. yeah um but let's see what it made for boost right there uh, da, 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 da. now you can see in our graph here on zoom there we go and let's get these synchronized there we go it's still climbing it's still happy up there i mean that's all cool um that little bit of jet change is pretty amazing isn't it that that basically probably that is 1535 that's 150 horsepower there here it is 1862 uh 1754 i mean it's a hundred horsepower in jetting and that's what you'll find um but uh i'm not not a, i'm not gonna push this any farther because i just don't like to do it anymore um and our boost was made it all the way up to 30 pounds of boost so it's still a little off it should make just a little bit more horsepower at that pound at that boost level probably would actually figure it out at probably around i really should make about 22 but you really have to go if it's efi no problem uh, i can figure it out i can do a little trimming on cylinders if we had that kind of intake manifold if we have my billet intake manifold like his new engine uh it doesn't have those fuel distribution problems that's how i designed that manifold um so uh it's just limitations of where that's at that's all so anyways uh the next th the next deal that you would be seeing uh so we're gonna finish this is this one is gonna get freshened up and is for sale okay good engine good engine we'd like to probably convert it over to you could either do it uh we'd probably end up converting it to efi is what i would guess if somebody wants to back it down and wants to run it with a blow through carburetor i don't care that's fine got a nice tune up and set up for it okay uh uh the the next time you'd be seeing anything for Lance is after we get all the EFI, get everything all plumbed up and all done, and uh, working on his methanol injected 540, EFI injected 540. Be interesting to see comparison because we'll be looking at making 2500 plus with that. So, uh, you know, an easy 500 plus horsepower more, probably a little closer to 2800 horsepower, 25 to 2800 horsepower with, with that blower. Um, so, That'd be cool. All righty, you just saw something really super cool. Gonna explain one thing for you that is like crazy interesting, all right? First, this tube comes through and left this little dinger in my wall. So steel wall, polycarbonate glass, really wouldn't have been worried if it would have hit the glass either. That's why I wasn't really sweating it. But fascinating what was blowing out of here. This is what a water to air intercooler does. This water to air intercooler does not leak. It does not leak. There's no water leaks in this or anything. But what you were seeing coming out of here was cold air condensation water. That is water coming out of the pipe. All right? Cold air moisture. Crazy to actually see it wide open throttle when have you ever seen a tube blow off of anything in a car anywhere and see the water just the condensation coming out of the blower through the intercooler if it's coming out of the air or the hot air here is nothing goes through the intercooler through the uh through the system it has ice water in here condensates pulls water out of the air condenses it whatever scientific terminology is for it i'm sure somebody will correct me put somewhere right out here put a comment <laughs> And, but that is condensation blowing out of the tube. That is crazy cool. Uh, glad nothing ever, glad nothing happened. It's not a big deal. We're all done with it. And uh, uh, so, like, subscribe, um, buy some merch. I got the ISM shirts back in. Um, what else we got? We'll be out racing. Kyle will be out racing. So we got lots of cool stuff coming up. So make sure you watch the videos, uh, like, subscribe, hit the little notification buttons, and share. I'm Steve Morris. Have a great day.